Tom Hardy's played some of the biggest roles in pop culture, but it was when he started beefing up for his role as Bane that he became an aspirational figure for gym enthusiasts around the globe. With imposing masculinity and bulging biceps, Hardy presented a formidable on-screen presence. And most outrageously, he achieved that body in only three months. Keep watching as we tell you how he did it and the after effects of the rapid muscle gain. First up, Hollywood often breaks the internet, but not like this. Incredible feats of physical transformation happen in Hollywood all the time. A leading man could be bulking up for a part or shredding pounds for another. Think Christian Bale to Fight Club with Brad Pitt's Fight Club, or even Camille Nanjiani's breakthrough superhero transformation, a change that eventually had him embrace a life of fitness and health consciousness. But Tom Hardy's transformations are epic in every sense of the word. They defy expectations. He gives himself entirely to a project time and again, no matter the part, and he transforms in front of our eyes to become an entirely different character. Now, just how did he do it? In one of the most notable physical transformations in movie history, Tom Hardy became Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, but how did he do it? Keep watching as we give you the details about Hardy's exercise routine and diet, everything that took him from Tom Hardy to super villain Bane. To start, let's look at his diet plan. Tom Hardy had an increase in his calorie intake for the part massively. He had three huge meals a day and three snacks between meals. And on top of that, he used an impressive range of supplements just for good measure. His daily intake was around 3,300 calories, consisting of 450 grams of carbs, around 210 grams of protein, and 90 grams of pure fat. Although he didn't go through the ordeal of chicken breasts and spinach that most other celebs use, to maintain their figures, he still ate clean, but his food intake provided enough fuel to keep up the intensity of his workouts. When he was training for the part of Charles Bronson, he said, quote, We didn't have any time to waste, so I started eating, and my arse very quickly got fat. I put on about 7 pounds a week for Bronson with no steroids. In the end, I'd put on about 2.5 stone by eating chicken and rice, which was my staple diet throughout the day. Food alone couldn't have done all of that. There has to be a supplement presently. Keep watching as we continue to fill you in on the details. Okay, so which supplements did he take? Hardy included protein powder in his regime, also pre-workout protein bars, and a mix of high-quality nutrients and minerals with amino acids. Hardy stresses that supplements could never replace healthy eating, but adds that they greatly enhanced his recovery times. And as a side note, if you want to bulk up as Tom Hardy did, consider taking whey protein. This will speed up muscle growth because it repairs muscle and tissue and creatine, which enhances strength and increases muscle mass. Everybody asks about his workout routine. Did he do something special to make such a dramatic physical transformation? And how did Tom Hardy work out for Bane? It took a lot to get in shape to play one of the more drastically dominating villains ever to grace the big screen. He trained four times a week, and add more than 30 pounds of pure muscle and strength to his lean frame, he took Wednesdays off to focus on recovery and avoid injury. His recovery day was by no means 24 hours of slouching though, he kept it active with light cardio, yoga, and active and static stretching. In training, Hardy sought to maximize chest and arm growth and Focused on his back and leg muscles, he gained 14 kilograms, taking him from an original 76 kilograms to 90 kilograms of pure muscle. So what did his workouts consist of? Compound exercise and isometric exercises performed with high repetition mostly. He worked with medium to heavy weights using barbells, dumbbells, machines, and personal body weight. Mondays were for chest and legs, Tuesday was for arms and legs, Wednesdays were set aside for recovery and light cardio, Thursdays were for abs and back, and Friday he went back to arms and legs. We should never forget that this is Hollywood. Many flaws are hidden with camera angles and good lighting. Keep watching to see if this was the case with Bane too. Meanwhile, Hardy says he was overweight before the Bane transformation. In a recent interview, the actor said he was bald, slightly porky, and with pencil arms. Back in 2012, Hardy's metamorphosis into Bane was the stuff of legend. He was no stranger to rocking body changes for other roles, notably Warrior and Bronson, but he had to bulk up significantly to play Batman's arch nemesis in the third installment of Christopher Nolan's trilogy, a decade later. Hardy's Bane is still talked about. In a recent interview with BBC One, he spoke about the mental and physical toll the role had taken. If you study the photographs of Bane, I was overweight. I ate a lot and I was much heavier than I am now, but I ate more pizza. They shoot from low and make you look big, he said. People would lift the lids on their motorbike helmets and say, I always thought you were bigger, mate. I was just bald, slightly porky and with pencil arms. He explained, quote, that's the magic 
magic of light and three to four months of lifting and training and eating lots of pizza, it wasn't great for my heart. The point was to look as big as possible. I have skinny legs and my friend Jacob Tamori, my stuntman, liked to say, quote, why did Tom come in riding an emu? He's also humble, saying, compared to Christian Bale, I've been by no means extreme in my body changes, already telling the Daily Beast in a separate interview. It wasn't all physical, though. Stay with us as we see how else Hardy has prepared to step into the life of Bane. Now, The Dark Knight Rises, how Hardy became Bane. There are many notorious villains in Gotham City, the Joker, the Riddler, the Penguin, and even the Loon Man, a hell of a lot scarier than he sounds, all fight Batman at some point. Batman mostly wins, but the villains sometimes dish out a fair beating themselves, like the steroid freak Bane, also referred to as Gotham's Reckoning. Over the decades, Batman and Bane have seen in countless TV series and movies, but Tom Hardy's Bane is the one that will be remembered. And it's clearly all in the prep. Brady and director Christopher Nolan are well-known team. They work together on Inception and Venom. Hardy has his fair share of body transformations when preparing for challenging roles. Characters like Venom, a nearly sick symbiote, the family-oriented Ivan Locke, and the witty Eames from Inception are all great examples. Hardy was a lot smaller than the comic book character when he was originally cast for the part. Hitting the gym was the first stage of his prep. A gym, a high-calorie diet with good supplements, got him to gain 30 pounds during the pre-production phase. Then, it was all about finding the right voice. So, once he had gained the pounds and gotten properly cut, he had to step into Bane's huge shoes to compete the character's transformation. Hardy's creation, Bane's voice, and it may as well be one of the most iconic parts of the character's portrayal, with pay dirt lines like, I am Gotham's Reckoning, and you think the darkness is your ally, but you merely adopted it. The character started molding around Hardy. So, how did the voice come into being? While shooting, Hardy spoke all of his lines while wearing a mic on set. That's standard for actors. He also wore the classic mask, which is how Bane inhales the vapor that sits at the source of his super strength. The movie mask proved to be awkward, a real stumbling block. It was noted that the test audience had difficulty even hearing Bane when the film was shown to them. They kept on missing important lines because of the muffled effect the mask was creating. According to IndieWire, Hardy returned and redubbed his lines, using Using a technique called ADR, which stands for Automated Dialogue Replacement, which allowed the editors to get a cleaner, crisper dialogue track. And it was here, in the post-production, that Bane's iconic voice was born. Bane also speaks with an accent that is different from Hardy's own. To achieve this, Hardy based the accent on a boxer, Bartley Gorman. He emulated everything about the boxer's speech mannerisms, his tonal quality, his deep threatening growl, which is what Bane has become famous for, and the slurs and angles around Bane's words. Any rapid physical transformation does come at a price. Watch to the end to discover Tom Hardy's price for transforming into mega-villain Bane. And finally, there was an aftermath. Bane came at a cost for Hardy. His short-term muscle game hurts his joints and was very unhealthy for his heart. Many actors who have undergone similar dramatic weight changes complain that it's hard to continue training once filming is over, and Hardy found that too. In other words, Hardy loved playing the role and he poured himself into it. Bane and Hardy will definitely be linked to each other, no doubt about that. That's all for today's video, my friends. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.